Starting to get a little nervous here at this point, a little sweaty. Then we get a JMO side in. See you later. Get in there, baby. <laughs> then we get the Calvin dunk. Oh, cut off. What a huge explosive play. What a great time for that. Lions head into their bye week after an offensive explosion on Monday Night Football over Seattle. Jared Goff was nearly perfect, and the Lions came out victorious 42-29. to Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Johnny Gaz. Thank you for returning for another video. Let's go through my week four report card. I'll hand out grades to all of the position groups, including the coaches for this primetime victory over the Seahawks. Let's go. Before we go to school for week four, make sure to like the video if you dig the vibe here at Johnny Gaz Sports. We're going for 100 on this video here today. I'd love it if you consider subscribing to the channel. We've just gotten over 2,000 thanks to you guys. And if you hit the notify bell, it's the best way to make sure you don't miss any future videos. There's a membership option available. If you hit the join button on any one of my videos, I'll walk you through all the options you have. We just did a live play-by-play -play reaction to Monday Night Football here this past week. Thank you guys so much for the recent interaction. Make sure to comment down below. What did you guys think of this matchup? Lions, Seahawks, Monday Night Football. Did you love what the Lions did offensively? Jared Goff's perfect performance. A lot to get into here in Monday night. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the offense and, of course, the Jared Goff performance. Like I said, he was near perfection going 18 of 18 for 293 yards, two touchdowns passing, an oh yes, a touchdown receiving the first of his career. What an amazing play that was in general. But Jared Goff had control of this game from start to finish. So I am giving him an A for this performance against the Seahawks. The Lions running backs. And I don't think there's any doubt truly now that this is the best running back duo in the NFL. They are truly a one-two punch. And I think we're discovering that you can get more out of each of them here this season. Monty had... Uh, the one touchdown, 40 yards on the ground, 40 yards through the air. Jameer Gibbs had 78 yards on the ground. He also had two touchdowns himself. I really think these guys are, are truly fantastic. They give the Lions a, a, a one-two punch. And if they get the ground game started early, a lot of things come off of that. And you get a performance like the Jared Goff performance because you started on the ground with Montgomery. You go in the middle of the game with Jameer Gibbs and you finish with Monty again. It's a formula that seems to work for the Lions, and I am giving the running backs an A-minus for their Monday night football performance. Now let's hit on the offensive line, which we know were without All-Pro Frank Rag now, and I thought they held up well without him in the lineup. They moved Graham Glasgow to center, Coyote Oasika into the, into the guard position, and I thought they did very good. They had 118 rush yards on 18 carries, which is a four-and-a-half-yard average, but they did give up three sacks, obviously had the, the, the bad sack, in the end zone there for the safety at the end of the game and had four pressures overall. Um, for that, I gave the offensive line a grade of B-plus for their performance against the Seahawks. Sam Laporta and Brock Wright are starting to show more production in the Lions offense, and I thought that really showed in Monday Night Football here for the first time this season. Um, Sam Laporta had four receptions for 53 yards. He did have the big reception there. And Brock Wright himself had a couple receptions for 13 yards. But I think even more important than that, you started to see them get more involved in the blocking game, sort of crossing, you know, the formation, be able to cut block, cross block, and really get more of that here as the Lions start to establish their run game early and often in these games. Because of all that, I thought they did well. I give the tight ends a grade of B+. And the wide receiver group, and I think that's another position that's starting to show a little bit more of the dynamic aspect that they can bring to the offense. And the fear was always, what do they do with the X wide receiver? Well, now you're starting to see Tim Patrick become more and more involved, which is great to see. Obviously, Amon Ross St. Brown is him. That toe-touch catch in the end zone to really cap it at the end of Monday Night Football, that's a big-time play made by a big-time player. We opened up this video with the 70-yard TD reception by Jamison Williams. Him putting his hands on the ball is a true weapon for the Lions. Anytime he touches it, he could score a touchdown, and that is showing now. Defenses are going to have to plan around that moving forward. So I thought the wide receiver group was very, very good here on Monday Night Football, aiding in Jared Goff's perfect performance. This group, the wide receivers, gets an A for me.
For the offense as a whole, there's a ton to touch on, but I'm going to give them an A- minus for this Monday night football performance. And you may think that was harsh, but I thought the offensive line could be just a little bit better. And I know that's hurt by a little bit of injuries, but you got to factor that in. Jared Goff was absolutely perfect, but I think there were just a few tiny nitpicky things to look at. You know, I just don't think you can give up that safety. And that's not all Jared Goff. That's offensive line. That's play calling. There's a few little things here and there. There were opportunities in the second half. I thought they could have done even a little bit more. And it's crazy to say at 42 points, and I will always take that. Um, but again, I don't. I wouldn't say that overall they were perfect. There's still some things here and there, but you're starting to see what was one of the best offenses in the NFL the last couple of years really start to take shape. Explosion, big plays at big times by big players. That's really what this offense is starting to show. And again, I gave them a grade of A- minus for their Monday Night Football performance. Let's move over to the defense and start with that defensive line. Of course, Aiden Hutchinson, which did not record a sack, which breaks a streak for him. But he is just a pressure monster. He had 10 additional pressures on 54 eligible rush snaps. That's an amazing percentage, 18% rush pressure rate that's really really good on top of the nfl but the entirety of the defensive line i thought still wasn't fantastic i thought the interior was good i thought dj reader ali mcneil levi onzarike i thought those guys when they were on the interior were good they didn't allow rushing from seattle early and often during the game but once seattle realized especially in the second half that they could start rushing the ball towards the outside and get around the outside of this defensive line um, I mean, they really started to have success. So that's really where I think the Lions started to struggle up front on their defensive line. Who is going to be that guy opposite of Hutch? I don't know if James Houston's the answer. So overall, I gave the defensive line a grade of B for their Monday Night Football performance. Now let's talk about the linebacker crew, who we know is already short. Derek Barnes, the Sam linebacker, injured last week. And then we had Alex Anzalone coming off of concussion protocol, getting back into the swing of things. I thought he was actually a little bit slow, um, a little bit behind here. And I think that's just kind of reacclimating himself back into the lineup. Jack Campbell, we know, made a play with the forced fumble on DK Metcalf early in the game that led to a touchdown. Malcolm Rodriguez had a sack. So you see that they made plays, but I think on the opposite end of things, they were also a big part of that outside rushing attack from Seattle having success. Them along with the defensive line just were not able to stop Kenneth Walker, especially in that second half. I think that along with some tackling issues as well as some pass coverage issues. We know Jack Campbell is sort of working on that, getting a little better as we kind of progress through his career. That's something that the entire linebacking crew is really going to need to get better at here as we move forward into the season. Because of all that, I gave them a grade of C-plus for their game against the Seahawks. And this was probably the hardest group to judge in this game, the secondary. And you see here, I gave them a D-plus, so let me justify that with you here. Let's start with the good. I thought that Carlton Davis was good in spots. It's a really tough guard against DK Metcalf. He is so physical, so imposing, fast, strong. I mean, you, you really have to be in for it that day going into it. And I thought he was game. I really thought Carlton Davis hung in there. Maybe some tough penalty calls. I didn't think there was anything truly egregious. And I also didn't love that he was so wordy with the official. I actually thought that that might have gone over the edge a little bit, and he's lucky he didn't get flagged. Um, but it just shows you he's certainly there to compete. I know Dan Campbell loves that. So there were some good things. On the other side, Terry and Arnold, I think, just continues to be flagged constantly. He is super handsy. I think they knew that coming into it, and that's sort of how Aaron Glenn teaches his defense. So I don't think, they, I don't think they're down on him. He certainly is up to the challenge. I thought they held up well, but they gave up 375-plus passing yards to Geno Smith um, again in this revamped secondary. Now, again, they were without Brian Branch, so they were down one man there, and he plays a huge part in this. But I thought Kirby Joseph did a good job making up for that miss. I thought um, on the other side, Brandon Joseph, the replacement was okay, but there was an issue with that DK Metcalf touchdown where him and Carlton Davis sort of got caught in between there. So, I mean, there were some things, and again, they gave up mega yardage here. Uh, they're going to have to work on the penalties, pass interference, defensive holding. So there are a lot of things that they're going to have to continue to get better at as they progress through the season. Because of that, again, I gave them a D plus. And we outlined it all here, but overall for the defense, I gave them a C minus. I think there's a lot to work on coming out of this. I think a lot of the historical things that the Seahawks did to you, they did again to you here on Monday Night Football. Geno Smith was fantastic yet again. You know, uh, even the turnover he threw was really just trying to make something happen at the very end of the game. Yes, a good play by Kirby. 
Um, yes, Hutch is still an animal as far as pressures. And I think you're, you're young at the cornerback position. I think Tyrion Arnold will grow. Carlton Davis, obviously, with a tough assignment. So there were you know a lot of things up and down there. But I think overall, I think they, they would have, have loved to give up much less in the yardage category. I think the outside rushing concerns are really maybe the true issue coming out of this. What do they do to stop that from happening? Who can they get on the other side of Hutch to really give him more opportunity to complete these pressures in the sacks? So again, a lot of questions, I think, defensively coming out of this matchup. So because of that, overall, I gave them a C-. minus. I will give an overall grade for the special teams, a B-plus for their Monday Night Football performance. Let's start with the punter, Jack Fox, who I thought wasn't as good as he had been earlier on in the season, but I don't think he was bad in any way. I just don't think it was necessary for him to pin Seattle back deep a um, hundred times like he did against the Cardinals. Um, so I thought he was okay. I thought their punt and kick coverage was very good. They didn't give up anything to Seattle as far as that goes. Um, but on the one end, I will say this, although Jake Bates was six for six on extra points, which is fantastic. He didn't even have to kick a field goal because the Lions were five for five in the red zone. Um, but every single extra point he kicked seemed to be some sort of an adventure. Everything was off to the right, seemed like, and it was just waiting for one of those to miss. It almost seemed inevitable to me, and now it didn't happen. So, again, we'll just move forward, and I'm going to continue with this grade of a B plus. You can't kill the guy for making all of his extra points, but it's just something to keep your eye on. Um, again, he didn't have any field goal attempts, and we'll see how that plays out now as we get into the meat and bones of this season. And now let's talk about the coaching from week four in Monday Night Football. I don't think there was much for Dan Campbell to decide in this game. He really didn't have to go for it and didn't have a need to go for it on fourth down. So that just really didn't happen. I don't think there were any kind of blunders or anything to really pinpoint there. Um, I thought that Aaron Glenn's performance defensively leaves a little bit to be desired. There's a lot left to be done in the secondary here to feel more confident in that group. I think the injuries up front and in the linebacking crew are going to have to be monitored. Uh, they have to figure out the opposite in a hutch. We just talked about all that. So I think for him, I kind of had a grade of C for, for his coaching performance on Monday night. But on the other side of this, I think Ben Johnson's performance was masterclass. Um, there were a couple little things here and there, but they were five for five in the red zone. Jared Goff was perfect. The running game was going strong. Their play action game was working. You know, their trick plays were working. Everything was going really well for the Lions offensively here on Monday Night Football. So for him, that was a solid A. Um, so overall, I thought the coaching was good. I think they're still left with some questions defensively. They feel confident offensively. Overall, I gave them a B plus. What an awesome game Monday Night Football was between the Lions and the Seahawks. Just so entertaining, back and forth, up and down. A lot to talk about. Let me know what you thought about this matchup. Jared Goff's performance was just near perfect. Maybe down the road we'll do a video on why he did not have a perfect quarterback rating. It's very interesting how that rating is all calculated. But either way, let me know what you thought. Monday Night Football was so much fun to watch. I appreciate all you guys for hanging around for me. Make sure to hit that like button if you dig the vibe here at Johnny Gas Sports. I'd love it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Join us along for the adventure. We've just gotten over 2,000 subscribers. Hit that notify bell so you don't miss any future videos as well. There's a membership option available. We're doing a lot of fun stuff on that side, but of course, we'll have all this fun free content for you as we move forward through the season. I want to thank you guys so much for your time, but more than anything else, take care of yourself, that mental health. That is so important. I want to make sure you come back and see me on those future videos. Thank you guys again. Go Lions.